Hey, welcome back to the homestead everyone. One of the most important things you can have on your homestead for food preservation is a root cellar. Today, we're gonna show you how to build this simple one. Stay with us. So it looks like uh, all I have is a big pile of hay here and that's not exactly true. Let's look underneath and see what we did. On the top, we do have some hay as an insulator. But we also have this rigid styrofoam insulation, which, ha which helps insulate the top of our little root cellar very well. So check it out. As you can see, underneath the rigid foam insulation, we have a buried galvanized steel, uh, brand new galvanized steel garbage can. And we've got it vented out of the top. I'm going to show you inside here. This is our root cellar. Basically what we did is just dug a hole in the ground. Now under the ground the temperature of the soil in any area is going to remain constant. Now it's just about getting down to that level uh, where you retain that consistent temperature over the winter. Say up in Michigan where I was from I believe the frost line is at 48 inches so the ground is going to freeze to uh, 48 inches below the top of the soil and below that the temperature of the soil remains constant throughout the year here in Texas where I'm at it only freezes if it does freeze at all uh, about one foot down or 12 inches below the surface beyond that you're gonna get a consistent temperature throughout the year so we've buried this beautiful steel container here this garbage can and as you can see it retains a beautiful amount of humidity now you want that humidity for most of your fruits and vegetables uh, to be quite high and in this case um, I haven't measured this but most fruits and vegetables need about 90 percent humidity some need a little bit less some need up, up to words of 95 percent and that's okay because we're retaining a great amount of moisture here now as you can see we drilled some holes in the bottom of the steel um, garbage can that is for two reasons one is obviously to let out any moisture that's accumulating inside it is it will drain out the bottom into uh, our pit and drain away from our uh, fruits and vegetables that is going, going to help control uh, any mold growth or anything like that. The high humidity is great, but you don't want any standing water in there. Now additionally, we put this vent in the top of our steel can. That is to do one thing and is to let out warm air. Warm air rises, cold air sinks. So those holes in the bottom of the garbage can also act as cold air uh, inlets from the bottom and this is the warm air outlet from the top. We cover everything up, keep it nice and insulated on this top, and you've got a great environment for keeping carrots, potatoes, apples, uh, and a whole host of other things. We're gonna put our, some of our Chinese cabbage in here this winter, and a few other things. Now in the summertime, it's still 90 degrees outside today here. We're in mid-August, and this is beautifully cool on the inside. This winter we're going to continue to monitor the temperature and make sure everything's okay. If it's a little too cold maybe some more insulation on the top to keep that cold out. Have you hit that bell notification and the subscribe button yet? We really appreciate it if you did. 
because we want you here all the time to see all these cool videos we're putting out for you here on our little East Texas homestead. Now, let's get back to the root cellar. Make sure in any openings in your root cellar container, you have some sort of screen to keep rodents out. On this little vent on the top, we've just got some screen on the side of it, and the holes that we drilled in the bottom are only 3 eighths of an inch, so no rodents are gonna get through that. Remember, the best root cellars are gonna maintain between 32 and 40 degrees constant temperature with a humidity between 80 to 80 to 95 percent humidity, some a little lower, some a little higher, depending on where you're at. But that is the ideal environment for a root cellar. So we did pull some of that straw back and actually backfill into uh, on the sides of our container because soil is an incredible insulator and it does a fantastic job just as well, probably better than this straw. Having a root cellar is a great way to preserve some of your crops if you're not uh, canning everything in some things you cannot can and you're not freezing everything in some things you cannot freeze. So root vegetables go incredibly well. Carrots, beets, uh, rutabagas, turnips, potatoes down into the root cellar. That is the best environment for them. Now onions need a cool dry place so you don't want to put them here within the same uh, root cellar as everything else because this, this one has quite a high humidity. You want to find a different place, a dry place for your onions. You want to be careful and you want to continually monitor your root cellar over the course of the winter or summer or whenever you have vegetables in there. You want to maintain uh, about a weekly schedule for checking out your root cellar, maintaining or uh, checking that temperature, checking that moisture, but also checking your fruits and vegetables in there. If there is one that has been bruised, and you want to be careful not to put bruise or scarred or cut um, uh, produce in here, those will rot faster. And if they happen to start growing mold on them, that mold can spread really quickly to uh, the uh, neighbors in the root cellar. So you want to make sure to call those on a weekly basis. Just go through there and take uh, stock of what's in there and make sure that uh, everything is great. Now let's go down inside and we're going to show you how to layer all of your fruits and vegetables. Now we use straw but you can also use sawdust which works incredibly well. Okay we're going to do about a five inch or so layer of straw to start off and we're going to start placing some potatoes. Now the cool temperature will hinder the production of ethylene gas which makes fruits and vegetables ripen quicker. This will also slow the growth of these um, potatoes that are trying to actually uh, sprout, they think they're going to be planted again. We want to slow that process down so that we can utilize these as seed potatoes for next spring. Once we've got a nice layer of produce, we're going to separate our next layer with another layer of straw and or sawdust or whatever you want to use. But like I said, the straw or the sawdust work the best for us. This is an incredibly simple method for making a root cellar. Now, a lot of people say that you have to uh, sink this top about 10 inches below the uh, surface of the soil. We don't do that because it's a little bit more difficult to get to. What we do is we mound up some of the excess dirt that we use to dig the hole around and up and over the top of uh, the lid of our uh, steel garbage can here. That gives us the ability to fill all this area in with some good insulating straw and also with our rigid foam insulation and on top of that. Works for us, worked for my father 30 years ago in Michigan and as you can see also we're undercover here. I think this is kind of important. If you don't have the ability to put uh, your root cellar under cover, 
It can still work outside, just make sure you shield it from uh, heavy downpours and you're going to want to drain it properly and get that, get that water away from sitting in the hole. But under here, we're outside in our stable. My father put his in uh, the back corner of our barn. Uh, this is a perfect area. Of course, it's going to shade it on the top and keep it cooler in the summertime. So it's 90 out there in the shade. It's maybe five degrees cooler. Plus, we've got the ground as the insulator. The insulator is on top. This is a great place for this root cellar. So dig your hole, drop your can in there. It's a really inexpensive way to do a root cellar. So you're not building an entire room unless you need that amount of storage, which if you're blessed to have that amount of produce, I'm so happy for you. We don't. This will work sufficiently for us now. Maybe we will build something bigger in the future. But this steel can was 30 bucks. Negligible amount of uh, money put into, you know, the little vent here and uh, some pieces of scrap foam insulation in the straw. Really not that much. So if you enjoyed the video today, we appreciate it. We want you to stick around on a permanent basis. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and a little silly bell notification next to it because YouTube requires it now if you want to know that we've got new videos coming out. Go visit us on countrylivingexperience.com. Go in the link below to and visit our Amazon store. We'd really appreciate it. Helps out our family. Thank you so much. Have a great day. We'll see you next week in the next video. Bye.